Hello! I thought I'd talk to you today about something topical, the Olympics. Well, the Olympics were invented by the ancient Greeks, and the ancient Greeks invented many sports. But at the first recorded Olympics in 776 BC, there was only one contest, which was a running race called the Stadion, as it was a stadion long, roughly 192 metres or 600 feet, which was the length of the running track at Olympia. And the winner was Corybius of Elis, a naked chef. In fact, all competitors were naked and women weren't permitted to attend. In later years, boxing, wrestling and the pentathlon were added and the only item worn by any of the all-male athletes was a leather thong that the boxers wrapped around their knuckles. Even the coaches were naked. Although this tradition of coaches being naked only began in 404 BC, after a widow called Calipatera broke the rule against female spectators and dressed as a trainer in order to watch her son Psyrodos. When he won, she leapt over a barrier to congratulate him and all was, well, quite literally, revealed. The five Olympic rings were invented in 1913 by Pierre de Coubertin, president at the time of the International Olympic Committee, to mark the five successfully completed modern Olympiads. It was his intention to add a ring for each Games, but the First World War intervened and so the symbol was adapted to represent the, con the five continents. The tradition of the rings being an ancient symbol is based on a mistake by the American popular science writers Lynn and Gray Poole, who wrote a book about the ancient Olympics in the 1950s, in which they claimed to have seen the symbol carved into a rock at Delphi. Well, they had, but it turned out to be an abandoned prop used in a film about the 1936 Berlin Games. In the ancient Greek Olympics, during the first day of the Games, there was a competition between trumpeters and heralds to see who was the loudest and clearest. The one who won was then responsible for crowd control for the rest of the Games. In 1980 Olympics, the gold and silver medals for pole vaulting were both won by poles. This reminds me of another story at the Olympics, where a, man, a reporter at the Olympics meets a man carrying a long pole and asks, Are you a pole vaulter? No, says the man. I'm German, but how did you know my name is Walter? London has only ever bid for the Olympics once, and that was in 2012. Remember that one? The city previously hosted the Games twice, both times at the request of the IOC. The Russian Olympic team arrived 12 days late for the 1908 Olympics because they were still using the Julian calendar. Some wonderful and possibly apocryphal quotes from past Games include one from Ron Pickering, commentating on the athletics. He said, watch the time. It gives you an indication of how fast they're running. The father of Coleman balls, David Coleman, once said, there's going to be a real ding dong when the bell goes. And finally, a boxing pundit once said, sure, there have been injuries and even some deaths in boxing, but none of them really that serious. It's a good job that deaths aren't serious. I'm reminded of the tale of a man who was found dead in a vat of chickpea dip. Police treated it as homicide. Game of Thrones stars were surprised to hear that Brandon Stark had qualified for the high jump at the Rio Games. Considering that there's a character called Bran Stark in the show who fell out of a window and lost the use of his legs, the actors were on Twitter commenting, Oh, it's great to see him walking again. And I just watched Brandon Stark compete in the high jump. Strange, because I thought he's actually better at the long drop. An athlete who was a fellow lover of puns at the Olympics was once asked by a fan, I see you won a silver medal. What's it for? He said, it's for telling knock-knock jokes. And the fan then said, well, what's the gold medal for? For stopping. Goodbye.